we're looking at over here is a nice legato fast passage that will help us get our speed using hammer ons and pull-offs and sounds pretty cool when improvising as well as so if you're doing a solo for example you can drop that little pot into an application and that's the usefulness of these exercises not just to learn the exercise but to be able to use the exercise now the first step is to break down the exercise and see what we originally or actually doing here here we go our first step is to get the rhythm into the exercise and the triplets you can actually hear the triplet one two three one two three one two three And all that's really changing the tone there is the picking technique which I'm going to focus on now now. What I first want to do is get the sequence going for the first triplet and the repetition within the triplet. Fingers on numbered, please make sure you're using the same fingers as I'm using as well. It's going to make it easier for us and the pinky is definitely going to work. It's going to be fret number two, hammering on to fret number three, hammering on to fret number five. Now you can hear there was a bit of string noise there as well where we actually wanted to hear this. Now to get the guitar quiet, we actually need the hand that I pointed with because by hammering on and not controlling the strings with your picking hand will result in string noise. So you're going to switch across quickly to your picking hand and let's see what we're doing over there. Onto your picking hand, notice that my palm is really close to the bridge, to the saddles. If you've got a strat style bridge, same difference, basically you're bringing your hand or palm as close as possible to the string. So it's not quite damping like this, this is damping. Which also sounds quite cool, Look, listen how nice this sounds. And then basically by sliding the hand backwards and forwards you can regulate and control how much damping you want to use by simply moving this movement, you can see a lot of damping, less damping. Now, with the picking, you can see it's pick two, three, pick two, three, pick two, three. And you'll notice my thumb is actually resting on my sixth string. You can actually see the sixth string moving there. That's intentionally done. And then this finger is actually holding onto the bottom string. Sometimes I'll even bring my middle finger on just to help secure the guitar strings to keep quiet so there's no unnecessary string noise, especially with high gain with a lot of overdrive or a lot of distortion. Okay, now if you bring your palm in, check this out. You can actually hear like a hint of a pinched harmonic by way I'm putting my pick down. So you can actually move your hand to change the level of the pinched harmonic too. But enough of that, let's get back to the exercise now. Back to the fretting hand. Remember we said make sure you use the same finger numbers as allocated baby here. And the first two groups of triplets are simply exactly the same. Just a string down. Control it as well, in other words, control the rhythm. Make sure that you can speed up the rhythm, slow down the rhythm, and that's what you're going to need to be able to do depending on the tempo of the song you're doing or you know how you want to sort of interpret your own improvising. So get to be able to control the rhythm. Now for the next string, you started off on frets two, three, five, two, three, five again, and then it went to two, four, five. So now you're going to have this. And what's quite a good exercise is to be able to loop it before you add on the next string. And when we say loop, in other words, first do the two strings. Then you do three strings. To make sure you've got nice finger control with this hand. For the next one, you move up a fret, up a semitone actually, well actually move up a fret rather, and uh, because obviously you're not working within the scale sound, let's not go there now, and you're now going to go three, five, six, combined together slowly, you can see the fingers there, and 
if you get some speed to it. And then make sure again no string noise and get the loop. And you finish off on the first string with a nice big stretch. And this one hurts a little bit over here. And we need this note where the pinky is because this is all part of the key the exercise is in, which we haven't mentioned yet. We're in the key of C major, A minor. Now, interestingly enough, we might be starting on the note B, which some of the purists will say, ooh, you're actually playing B Locrian. But in essence, you're in the key of C major, you happen to be starting on the note B, which is the seventh note. So I'm not going to go into the theory of the modes right now. I first want to learn the exercise and the goals over here are to get good legato, get nice hammer-ons and pull-offs, and to get to also know where are all the notes in the key of C major. That's the main goal as well. So there's a whole lot of things inside this, also stretching the hand, etc, etc, making the pinky strong. Now once you've done this one over here, you're going to do a pull-off as well. So it's going three, five, seven. Five, three, cross over to the second string, six, and you pull off to three. So I'm going to skip this five over here. It's a slow motion. And it's speed. Okay. Next up, we're still in the key of C major. This entire exercise is in the key of C major. We're going to go to fret number three. We drop the thumb, you can see my thumb was here, it's dropped a bit, now it's out of sight. And we're now going to go 3, 5, 7, nice big stretches there, 3, 5, 7 again. And we're gradually working up. Now I'm not going to sit and do every single note for note as on the PDF file, that's for you to read. You've got the basic idea, you've got the approach, in other words you start off with two strings. Then you go to three strings, then you go to four strings, and then repetitions about the key, and it's not nice string jumps, there's a whole lot of positive reasons why this is a useful exercise, and then to include the fifth string you do the entire first bar. Then you go to the next one, and you can hear the exercise has got a similar sounding concept. It's running like it the whole way through, so it's a nice one to get used to stretches. It's a really good finger discipline. Also, if you want to sit and play around with the rhythmic side of it as well, you can maybe work with octaves. Now, that note is B and that's E, B and E, and there's a B and E over here as well. So if I wanted to, I can take this exercise and do an octave, which is a really good sort of exercise in jumping around for accuracy. Okay, and then you can go to another B and E over here. And you can join all of them together. And that's a nice way to get around your guitar really quickly. Nice little pinch them when you get the end there. And take it up and down. So these exercises are not sort of meant to be left as on the page, but also sort of think, what can I sort of play with octaves? How can I apply this to other combinations? If you think about the mathematical combinations you can do, they're probably pretty big numbers. So don't just learn an exercise and leave it there. Take it further. Work with the octaves. Okay, this is all improv on the wing as I'm busy going along over here. So if one or two of the little ideas aren't as accurate as I'd like to be, it's because I haven't actually practiced them. I'm just basically taking this last part of the video basically after about eight minutes and basically just talking about what you can do as it springs to mind. So your original goal was the exercise that I played at the beginning as on the PDF file. Take it as high as you can, obviously all the way to the top of the guitar neck. You can take it up to here for example. Let's get a bit of a different angle there. And you're going to end up right over here. Which is sort of quite sneaky because the frets are really really tight. So we're used to this wide hand position and over here it's really, really tight. And if you're doing that part there, you can actually see my thumb. I'm going to show you this now. The thumb is tapping. Watch how he lies on the strings to make sure 
we don't get string noise. We're going to do that same octave higher one and watch the thumb's movement. See it? Keeping the string quiet. Onto the next string. Onto the next string. Onto the last string. Nice way to keep your accuracy going there. And again, try and sort of reverse the exercise. Play around with it, experiment. Don't just leave it as it is. I hope this helps. Hope it gets your legato nice and smooth. So it's a nice way to get the pinky nice and smooth.